And we are the Steampunk Treasure Hunters. Um, the panel that we're doing today is mostly going to focus on cheap and easy steampunk costumes. Um, and I think we're going to start off with what is steampunk? Steampunk is set in an era or world where steam power is still widely used, usually the 19th century and often uh, Victorian era England. Um, it has prominent elephant elements. Elephants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there could be a steampunk elephant, so that would be pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, science fiction or fantasy, um, like fictional technological inventions, like those found in the works of H.G. Wells and Jules Verne. Um, and one quote that, that we've seen used many times to describe steampunk is what the past would look like if the future had happened sooner, and, and that's a really good way to describe it. All right. So basically, steampunk set in Victorian England. Uh, the Victorian era is technically 1837 to 1901. There are some loose variations as far as steampunk goes, but if you want to be technical, those are the years. Um, as stated before, H.G. Wells and Jules Verne had a big influence on it. Uh, you know, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, that sort of thing really sort of sparked the steampunk idea. Uh, technically, cyberpunk did come first, as much as I hate to admit it. Um, it also was part of the reason the steampunk name came about, because of sort of copying the cyberpunk thing. And steampunk, although underground, has been around since about the 80s, although it's obviously becoming a lot more mainstream now. Oh, did we want to stay on that? Yeah, there's yes. more words on yes. that. Yes, how about that? <laughs> All right. Um, as far as interpretations go, um, obviously people wear steampunk costumes to conventions. A lot of people do, however, wear steampunk clothing in their everyday life, whether it be full getup or just, you know, pieces, you know, sort of, I might wear a top hat if I'm walking down the street or something. Also, it can go as far as, you know, having items in your house steampunk modded, you know, if you have a steampunk keyboard, guitar, etc., that sort of thing. Um, as far as where it's going, um, a lot of times now you can find steampunk Halloween costume items in you know common stores. As far as steampunk type clothing, you can find in modern day stores now, like Forever 21 and Charlotte Russe has a lot of things that work for steampunk costumes, which is what makes what we do so easy. This corset is from Charlotte Russe. It works for this. And it's easy to find because they're everywhere. You can pretty much walk into any store and build an entire steampunk costume just from what you find in the store. Um, the other thing, and this is personal preference, as far as making your own costume, some people can't, you know, you can go out and buy a fully assembled costume and, you know, you're done. But as far as steampunk goes, it's pretty much what it means to you and so it, it becomes less unique if you just go out and purchase your costume not you know saying that's a bad thing to do but it is obviously highly creative it's pretty much what you make of it and so it's not this if everybody wore a you know Walmart steampunk Halloween costume it would obviously not be as cool as if everybody you know made their own thing out of it sure go ahead all right, now, that being said, there are many different types of variations of steampunk. First off, traditional. This would be much more the just Victorian era. It doesn't necessarily have to have any modifications, just the fact that it is Victorian does make it steampunk because now is not the Victorian era. Um, you can add some modifications on this, you know, it, it's not exactly traditional, but it's, you know, more traditional than like what we're wearing. Western, obviously. Hello, we're Western. Um, pretty much with this, you know, cowboy hats, that sort of thing. Obviously not Victorian England, but the Western in the U.S., that sort of thing. Guns, holsters, the whole getup. Pirate is another one. Little different kind of out there, but it still it still works. Um, these have some obvious, very elaborate modifications. Uh, also going along with pirates. Pirate next. Oh, pirate next. Oh. 
Yes. Okay. Aviator also can go like a sky pirate kind of thing. You know, you're on an airship, but you're a pirate. They're kind of all hand in hand. Um, honestly, they kind of blur together after a while, but if you want to try to go with a themed one, the easiest way to do is just pick, like we picked Western. And so we went specifically with Western, but you can like sort of blur the genres together. It's very easy to do that. <laughs> Civil War, a lot of people forget that the Civil War happened during this time period. So it is an acceptable way of costuming. Along with that, military, you know, not as widely seen, but still does exist. Explorer, the biggest piece of this would be the pith helmet. Um, got much to say on these. <laughs> yes. Uh, Post-apocalyptic is an interesting one. This is obviously going much further off of the traditional history timeline, if you will. Um, typically, it's just what would have happened if after or during the Victorian era there was some huge apocalyptic something massive happened, usually gas masks, that kind of type of thing. Okay, we're going to look at finding a costume. Um, basically, you can do it one of two ways. You can start with a concept. That's what we did with our costumes here. We were like, we want to do saloon girls. So Bethany ended up coming up with a design and then we found pieces to work into that. Another way that we also do it is we'll go out thrifting or to retail stores and things like that um, and we'll just find something that we absolutely love and we'll build a costume around that. Um, or I guess that's winging it. No, we start with costume. We need to buy everything. Oh. That's another fun thing we do. We like to go to thrift shops and whatnot and buy everything that we pretty much love, which gets us a lot of random costume pieces. But whenever we have a steampunk event, we don't have to show up in the same old costume because we can just randomly pick out things from our closet and put them together. Um, different places that you can get it is your armoire. Aren't we fancy? Um, but. I found this skirt in my closet. Um, yeah, I w was in that velour stage like 10 years ago, so. Keeping old clothing really, really helps this. Um, just accumulate clothes. Your significant other will probably hate you for it, <laughs> but whatever. Um, another place is resale shops, thrift stores, um, garage sales, estate sales. Um, used clothing. Going through your friends' closets also is a good thing. Um, retail stores, as we mentioned, Charlotte Russe, um, but pretty much any store you can see um, Victorian elements, military elements, um, Western elements, um, just various, you just have to look. It's there if you know what you're looking for. Um, and then the internet, you can look on eBay or like you can buy costume pieces from websites. I mean, there's several steampunk websites. They're pricey, but they do beautiful work. Um, now we're going to look into what composes a costume. Um, textiles that you would see back then would be corduroy, cotton, canvas, leather, and velvet. Wool, silk, lace, twill, and suede. You're going to want to avoid denim, knits, and synthetics. So was it Levi's made back then? Denim was mostly used for work clothing to cover the like common classes, like the clothes that they wanted to keep clean. Pretty much stay away from it. I you could, but it's pretty much looked down upon. It was used pretty much just for I'm working in the field. I don't want to get my clothes dirty. So you could, but recommended not to. Yeah, and these are not hard and fast rules. I mean, there's a slide up ahead that shows how you can totally say, screw this, we're going to create an awesome steampunk costume using things that you wouldn't think of. Um, next is colors, I think. Okay, colors and patterns. Um, classic patterns are okay, like they had lots of floral, um, uh, stripes, polka dots, basically anything that's in your grandmother's closet, really. 
Um, but avoid things like camouflage, animal prints, text. I mean, animal prints you might be able to pull off if you do like an ethnic cosplay. I hate that word, but more like, you know, African or something like that. You could maybe try and pull that off. But for classic steampunk, you usually stay away from that. Text. I mean, I've seen some pretty corsets and things like that where they have text written on them, but it wasn't a pattern that they used back then. Um, and then colors. Richer colors denote higher social status because the dye costs more. So the longer you left it in there, the more expensive the cloth was going to be, and the richer the color, the more expensive. So usually duller colors for cheaper things. Um, and then for colors, all you really need to avoid is neon, unless you look like this. This is a really amazing group. Instead of, you know, a lot of people mod Nerf guns for their steampunk guns, you have one there, and then they just paint them. They instead went and decided to make their costumes match their Nerf guns. So, I mean, these really aren't rules. You can just, you can look amazing doing stuff that wouldn't normally work. Okay. <laughs> Elements of style. Um, this is, I just basically want to go over what women used to wear. Um, corsets, pantalets, those are the, I don't, I don't think we have a picture later with someone in pantalets. Um, but those are basic undergarments. You can totally do undergarments in steampunk. Um, you don't have to wear clothes underneath or over. I guess, <laughs> wrong way to put that, <laughs> but I mean, with steampunk there's a lot of freedom to, you know, dress as, in as little or as much as you want, and they used to wear so many layers of clothing anyway, like you would put on <laughs> your undergarments, then you would put on your corset, then you would put on another slip over that, and then you would put on your dress, and I might even be missing some layers there, um, they wore a ridiculous amount of clothing. Um, one thing hoop skirts, bustles, both very big, bustles um, obviously later Victorian, hoop skirts earlier Victorian. Um, you can do nice things with fake bustles by just bunching a lot of fabric together in the back and using pins or darts or however you know how to do it. Um, they usually, they wore their hair up usually. Um, I think, oh, collar. So, um, basically with steampunk, everybody shows as much boobs as they want to, but <laughs> back then you would wear uh, high collars during the day, and then for evening wear, you would wear something more low cut. Mm. So the fancier you want to be, the lower cut your sh top was, I guess. Oh, corsets. They had a wide variety of corsets during this time. They had underbusts, they had overbusts. Um, really, you can do pretty much anything with the corsets. Um, like, it went into the Edwardian period that they started getting really long, where they would cover your thighs too, or I guess your hips, but um, usually anywhere around here, you can get away with it. Various styles. Um, for men's clothing, um, there's a little bit less variety, but um, but there's still a lot you can do. Um, there's a variety in, in the collar. Um, a lot of times, um, you'll see in the picture of the guy in the middle, his collar is up. Um, I don't remember what that goes with. with With the cr oh, cravat, yes. Yeah. Okay, so if you're going to wear a cravat, which is a type of a, a tie, you would do a, a pop collar. The guy on the far left, I believe, is wearing a cravat. It might be a little hard to tell. Um, but it's also okay to do a folded down collar as well. Um, it kind of depends on what you're going for. Um, tail coats were very popular. Um, and one thing we do want to point out is that uh, 
if you're looking for a male steampunk costume, like in the thrift store or something like that, um, sometimes women's clothing will work. So don't shy away from looking at, you know, vests and pants and that sort of thing. Um, we had someone who dressed up with us for a steampunk Chicago event, um, and we found uh, his vest in the women's section, and it actually worked out quite well. Um, the other thing that you may not think of is that uh, corsets were also popular uh, with men in the Victorian era as well. So that's another costume element that you could use. All right, accessories. One of the most important thing, shoes. For women, typically more of a pointed toe, a smaller heel. Um, Although with steampunk, it can vary a lot. You can wear, you know, boots. You can wear pretty much anything. But if you want to look typically more like the ones in the middle on the left-hand side, obviously less traditional than the other two. Um, a lot of elements of the shoes you want to look for. Try to stay away from zippers. It's usually pretty difficult to do. Zippers technically were not invented in the Victorian era. A lot of times you can't avoid this. Buttons, very good, like a hook and eye type of closure. Um, pretty much any other way of latching them aside from a zipper. Or Velcro. Or Velcro, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, buckles are also very good. Actually, there's some on there. Yes, yes, there are. Uh, typically, want to avoid any shoes with open toes, um, like you know, hooker shoes, so to speak. Uh, obviously, no. not all tennis shoes. Not all of hooker shoes, yes, but you just don't want them to be completely over the top. Typically, shoes are more not sensible, but reserved, sort of, I suppose. Um, spats for another thing. Seen for women. So, um, back then, I mean, shoes weren't really seen. They would peek out of the dresses every now and then when they walked, but... Um, you know, you couldn't really have as much of a fashion statement as you could nowadays just because they didn't show off their legs. Um, and then you know, English men are so stuffy, they don't get to wear cool shoes. <laughs> yeah, typically with guy shoes, honestly now, just regular guys' dress shoes work just fine um, on the bottom. More of just like a boot style also works just fine. Uh, also, with both men and women, uh, spats can be used. Uh, there's also shoes that look like they have like a faux spat sort of thing on them. The top demonstrates that. Typically, in white with black buttons is what you'll see most of the time, but the color can vary pretty much however you want. Um, you can find a lot of shoes now that typically like, you know, mock the spat fashion without actually being spat. As far as headwear goes, there is a wide, wide variety of different types of hats you can wear. Um, should I just read them? Yeah. Okay. I'll point to the, the less you obvious ones as they go. Okay. <laughs> top hats, obviously, for men. Are you going to point to them? Well, the top hat is obvious. I'm I think you should point to all of them. Oh, all of them? Yeah. I don't know where the top hat is. <laughs> all right, there's the top hat. All right, okay. Uh, bowlers. This is much more for the working class. <laughs> um, something we're going to call precariously perched tiny toppers. This is definitely much more found in steampunk. Um, pretty much it's, it's like a tiny top hat, either held on with like a headband or perhaps some clips, bobby pins, something, usually precariously perched. <laughs> or on a cat. <laughs> uh, the newsboy hat is also very popular. That would be more like, uh, I've seen it in a lot of women's fashion as well. You wear, you know, like, <coughs> more than like knicker type pants and like a vest and you're, you know, definitely much more working class than not. The boater, another typically male hat. The deer stalker. Sherlock Holmes. Yes, definitely. More, more commonly known as the Sherlock Holmes hat. So. <laughs> Detective Steampunk, go nuts. Cowboy, I think we hopefully all know what that one looks like. 
That one's obviously a taller cowboy hat, but any type of cowboy hat pretty much works. Uh, bonnets were, were very big. Do you want to say anything about bonnets? Um, basically, they had a wide variety of styles because this was how women showed off. Um, both that and the Kentucky Derby hat there. Um, both, I mean, they would do elaborate, elaborate hats and you, I mean, women would always wear bonnets when they go out, except maybe in the evening. And um, definitely big at church. So when they were going to church, they would definitely pretty that up because it, you're actually not allowed, to, women back then weren't allowed to show their hair in church just because of some arcane biblical rule. So pretty hats at church. <laughs> Um, oh, and veils. They would also wear veils, um, generally during, during mourning um, or weddings. Next is the fascinator. We do not have a picture because they are the feathers we are wearing, typically held on a headband or some sort of clip. Um, pretty much just a bunch of feathers, another sort of show-off kind of thing, but without being an actual hat. The flat cap. Also a working class hat, um, very similar to the newsboy hat. The pith helmet, mentioned earlier, typically used in sort of an explorer, adventurer kind of, I'm um, going through the jungle kind of thing. The slouch. That one for us. Yes, that, was, it, that was an Australian hat used by the military. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure other militaries ended up adopting that hat as well. Um, but I think it's a cool looking hat, so. <laughs> and as mentioned before, Kentucky Derby hats. We don't know the actual name, it's the only name we could find that no, was. Church hats, wedding hats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they have a lot of other, you know, church hats, wedding hats. They Pretty much they're them. about as over the top as you can get with a hat. That would be the uh, main point there. All right, jewelry. There is a lot of different types of jewelry, both traditional and currently acceptable. The biggest being the cameo. <laughs> um, you can find this, again, a lot in modern day things. Obviously it's more common, you know, going to like estate sales, resale shops, that sort of thing, but it is very popular even in modern stores. So it's pretty easy to find. Typically a brooch or a necklace, but you can't find earrings and that sort of thing as it as well. Pocket watch, probably one of, well, higher up on the list of traditional, typical steampunk items. Yes, she has a pocket watch. Doesn't have to be working, doesn't have to, it's pretty much more for show than anything. A lot of people like to have, you know, old working uh, pocket watches. They're handy. They look nice. Pearls, another traditional type item um, pretty much can I suppose class up anything that you're doing I think a lot with steampunk it's an interesting mesh between being very industrial and being very elegant at the same time particularly for women so adding pearls to something that's you know hard and metal can make it just an interesting juxtaposition if you will one thing I did want to point out um, when she mentioned pocket watches is wristwatches. They didn't have them back then. Isn't that crazy? I forgot when they were invented, but definitely everybody had a pocket watch. Um, men used to wear cufflinks. They didn't used to have buttons down there, so they used to have to wear cufflinks. Um, the chatelaine is right there, and it's something that women would hook on to um, like their belt, hmm. and it would have like little different items, um, like the keys and little sewing things and trinkets and stuff like that that they would need to get to. Oh, they put pencils on there too. Um, filigree is, um, you'll notice that's filigree work on that ring, um, very, very popular during the Victorian era. And for earrings, they didn't use posts. They had their so all dangles. Um, obviously, you don't have to stick to that. As I'm wearing posts, but 
Um, hair combs were also very popular back then. They can add a bit of zip, especially to an evening look. We also have hat pins. Oh, on the list, but there is yes. a picture of them. Hat pins. Obviously, women would have elaborate hat pins that they would stick into their hats to hold them on their head. Um, their hair was very poofed up, so that they would actually literally pin their hair to their hat to keep it on. Um, miscellaneous accessories, um, gloves. Um, women wore large varieties of length. I mean, opera gloves up here to shorter ones. Um, stockings were actually, they had a wide variety of colors and patterns. Um, one thing I would like to point out that fishnets weren't invented yet. You do see that a lot in steampunk and obviously, you know, everybody has their own take on steampunk, but it wasn't technically Victorian. Just like zippers aren't, but sometimes we cheat. <laughs> um, garters. Uh, obviously women would wear them to hold their stockings up, but men also used to wear them around their arms because uh, when they would buy shirts, they would all be one length. It would be a one-size-fits-all type of deal. So the arm garters were there to kind of hold up their sleeves at the correct length for them. Um, for neckwear, for men, um, Obviously, the cravat. Yes, that's the picture there. Um, they would also have ascot. And the difference between a cravat and an ascot is an ascot is worn um, against your skin, and the cravat is worn over your shirt. Um, belts, very popular in steampunk. We have a tendency to go shopping and just buy dozens and dozens of belts at the time. Um, <laughs> You know, a wide variety of styles and kinds. Um, glasses for steampunk. Um, you can get these. Oh, this is a loop. See these things? Very neat. Um, and you can actually buy them on Amazon.com for very, very cheap. One thing to note with buying things such as the loop online, a lot of times you find if someone puts the word steampunk in front of it, you'll notice it magically triples in price. Uh, if you do a little searching around, it, like if I bought these on a site called Gentleman's Emporium, they would have cost me $12. I got them for 5 on Amazon. They are painted bronze. It took about 5 minutes with some acrylic paint. A lot of times you find, you know, it's a lot cheaper if you do things like that yourself. But typically stay away from things where it's obvious that they're putting the word steampunk so people pay more for it. So definitely shop around if you're doing things like that online. Okay. All right. Some other accessories. Um, did you want to do parasols? Yes. <laughs> okay. This is kind of a pet peeve for me. I was a former Lolita too, so parasols and umbrellas. There is a difference between the two. Parasols were used during the daytime to keep the sun out. Umbrellas were used for rain. Um, so basically, if it's not waterproof, it's a parasol. Otherwise, it's an umbrella. Um, yeah, that's just a little pet peeve for me. They used to wear both. Um, canes were also really popular. Well, I guess they were used. I mean, people it's need a good canes. <laughs> but it, yeah, and you can do a lot of neat things with like the top of the cane, um, modding it and making it look steampunky, or just leaving it as it is. As far as purses are concerned, the drawstring bag pictured at the bottom were very popular in the steampunk age, the Victorian era, if you will. Um, also, sequins were very big on purses and that sort of thing. Uh, the top one there obviously has a very elaborate clasp on it. Um, again, with steampunk though, there's a wide range of different types of purses you can do. The one I'm wearing, I like it because it's bronze. It, other than that, there's not really anything steampunk about it. Um, bags and satchels, uh, there's a lot of different types of ways. It's obviously harder to accessorize for guys. Briefcases were invented. That gentleman has one there. Um, more like the bag she has here, just a little leather kind of carry-all type thing. Pretty much anything, again, staying away from zippers, staying away from, you know, name brands on the outside um, is what you want to look for. Fans. 
It was an accessory back then for girls. They're fun, they're pretty. Um, they would take them, obviously, out when they went to balls or to the opera or anything like that. Um, and basically, they would also use them because their corsets were pulled so tight they needed a little fresh air. Um, but yeah, it's a fun, I really love that fan that she has. It looks like it's made out of metal. Um, so there's fun things that you can do with fans as well. <coughs> All right. Now, goggles is probably one of the most commonly recognized steampunk things. I would say a typical mistake for people is assuming that you have to have goggles. And this is completely false. Goggles are not required. I do not even own a pair of goggles. I would love to, but I do not. It, it, if it doesn't make sense for your costume and or character, don't try to make it fit. They're wonderful to have if they work, but if they don't, don't force it. Um, as far as goggles go, you know, they can be worn on your face. A lot of people wear them on the brim of their hat, on their head, around their neck. They're nice to have if you really can't think of another piece to put with your costume. Uh, as far as weapons go, there's a wide variety. Obviously, weapons are more accepted at cons than just walking down the street. <laughs> um, painted Nerf gun, probably the easiest thing you can do. That was actually the first gun I, I suppose, made or modded, if you will. And since I don't really use it, I've gone to... Should I, should I go get the bazooka? No, it's okay. Are you sure? Okay, well, I have a bazooka sitting over there. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, where's your whip? You don't have so any, she also we'll has we'll a whip over there. Later. Oh, well, we're talking about it. We're <laughs> <not sure>. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, so pretty much anything that goes in line with your character can be pretty much turned into a weapon. Something when I was conceptualizing her costume, she is a conductor on a train. The railroad, like starting mechanism, I guess, could be removed, and I thought, hey, maybe she should, you know, carry that around and hit people with. You don't need a weapon, but it's more fun if you have a weapon. So, uh, tools, big thing, engineers, you know, wrenches, I don't know what a lot of them are called, but they look cool, you know, calipers, that sort of thing, just different old. I'm not quite sure what this does, but it looks like it would have been useful to do something, that sort of thing. <laughs> Obviously, I'm no mechanic. So. I just want to put robots in the R2D2 that we found. Um, someone, we don't know who, made a nice little art, uh, steampunk R2D2. We actually found a lot of uh, pop culture things while we were researching for our panel. Um, there are like steampunk uh, Justice League action figures and stuff like that, which was pretty cool. We don't have a picture of those, but you can find them on the internet. Um, and uh, augmentations, um, an example of that would be this uh, robotic arm here in this costume. Um, we just wanted to give you an example of that. Um, and then uh, computers, um, this is more a control panel and less a computer, but um, for steampunk, uh, you would go with something less electronic like this, but something more mechanical. Um, so if you, if you wanted to incorporate some sort of computer um, in your costume, it would you know, be this, this type of thing. All right, now the fun part, alterations and modifications. So you've gone out, you've bought all this stuff, and it's not quite steampunk enough, and you don't know what to do with it. Okay, for one thing, we have a motto. It has to work. <laughs> We've bought many things that we liked that were quite perfect, and there's a variety of things that you can do. Um, obviously, tailoring, if you have any somewhat basic sewing skills. Um, you can always do that. Um, we have special skill levels. Um, Bethan is not domestically inclined, I would like to say. <laughs> um, so, uh, but she's modded her clothing options with safety pins, um, uh, glue, which I do not recommend. It does not hold very well, <laughs> but it works for a couple of days. 
But again, if you're in a bind, glue works great. Um, and there's special fabric glues as well. Um, holding things up with ribbon, especially like if you ever want to like just like pull a skirt up, one of the things I love to do is um, buy long skirts and then you can kind of pull them up um, in various ways and safety pin them or pull them up with ribbon just to give it a bit more texture. I've also done the exact same thing using belts instead. I pretty much wanted a yeah. I wanted a ruched look to something, but obviously having zero sewing ability at all, pulling them up with belts sort of gave it that same look, but I am obsessed with belts, so it worked out quite well. Yeah, her alchemist costume last year, which looked totally kick-ass, she was in the fashion show, um, she basically pinned, she pinned, used bobby pins for her skirts, um, which it worked fantastically. She um, used it to make the skirt tighter around the waist. Yeah, how, how big was that skirt? Was it like a, yeah, like a torque? It was yes. gigantic. Like yeah. yeah, and it looked amazing. You can do simple things with safety pins. They're really amazing. Um, but obviously, if you do have any sewing skills or if you want to attempt it, it's not that difficult. Um, you can always do that. Um, I once bought a shirt that I kind of retailored, um, I made it fit a lot better. Um, basically, when you buy clothes, you do not work for the clothes, you make the clothes work for you. Um, so definitely alter them to make them look nicer. Um, another example of things that Bethann has done with her limited sewing knowledge is she made a cravat and hat band for her store out of some ties. I mean, <coughs> cutting things up and gluing and safety pin works wonders. Yes, as far as that goes, pretty much cutting the tie in half made the hat band out of the skinny part and the cravat was just pinned to the shirt and the collar and it was just puffed up enough to do it. So instead of spending who knows how much on, you know, silks and things like that, it was a dollar a tie and it worked wonderfully for what I needed it for. So a lot of creativity can, you know, benefit you as far as modding things goes. And simple, simple things to change are buttons and adding appliques. Um, the vest Sarah's wearing, I just bought some new buttons at Joann's. There were these ugly plastic clear ones before and the vest looks a lot better now than it did. Um, that's an easy, easy way just to make things look better. Um, and applique